Hey everybody, Wesley Strader here, and I'm here to talk to you a little bit about spinnerbaits. Uh, I'm here with the Bass University. I'm going to be talking about uh, why the spinnerbait kind of went away and why it's coming back. And uh, one of the reasons it's coming back is because everybody quit throwing it and everybody forgot about it. The chatterbait come along and everybody forgot about it and uh, everybody thought the chatterbait was the new wave of the future and, and it was and it still is but uh, spinnerbait's still catching them. I'm gonna go through a little bit today about what type of spinnerbaits I like, uh, blade combinations, sizes, all that and how it's a, it, it's a bait for beginners and experts. So you can trick them out to make them do whatever you want to do. Uh, you can even if you get really good at casting them uh, once upon a time, I didn't think that you could skip certain lures, but I have gotten to where I can skip a spinner bait now, and uh, it takes a lot of casting practice, but you can do it. So I'm going to go through that today and show you all the ticks and uh, tricks and techniques that I got. Uh, that I have my arsenal. I'm sure there's people got more, but this is just what I grew up doing and experimenting, tinkering with to get things to, to get the most performance out of your spinner bait. Okay, yeah, I'm, I'm going to go through seasonal patterns and everything on these on these spinner baits, and uh, and the the spinner bait that I prefer is a uh, it's a bango blade. Uh, it's by Stan Sloan Zorro, and the reason I like it is I helped design the spinner bait, and it's thirty thousandths wire. And there's there's two things about this wire. This wire, with it being thirty thousandths, it's more flexible. It gives off more vibration. But the downside of that is is it bends a lot easier and you don't get you won't be able to catch as many fish on it but i'm going to show you a, a tip a, a, a tip here on how to get more uses out of it and i'm not going to take credit for this gerald swindle showed me this because i kept trying to figure out a way to keep this when a spinnerbait breaks i'm going to use my old one here when it breaks is when you start when this r bend starts bending in and out and you're having to bend it back together because it's so light of wire that's where it's going to break as in that r bend because it starts stretching it. When you get a big fish on it, it's gonna straighten that out a little bit. Uh, and you can only catch about, you know, t maybe 10 fish on it, and then you gotta replace it. Well, Gerald Swindle showed me a trick, and this is a, a, a number one split ring by Eagle Claw. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna take this uh, split ring, and you're gonna put it in a pair of pliers. If I can get my fingers to work, it's a little cool this morning. If I can get my pliers to work here. And you're going to bend this down and you're going to force this split ring. If I can hold on to it, got to get me another pair of pliers. But anyway, you're going to force this onto that, on, on over that R bend. And what this is going to do, I'll show you in a second what this is going to do. You may have to push it on a little bit. See how I got that over that like that right there? See, I got it over that R bend. And what that's gonna do is, that's gonna keep that from bending out. It can never bend out further than that split ring is. So now, I've doubled my uses out of my spinner bait because now it ain't gonna bend out as much. It's not gonna break. Now, if it ever gonna break, it's gonna break right at the head here. I'm gonna show you another tip. When I'm throwing my spinner baits, I like to uh, like to take my pliers and I'll put my pliers about right there and I'll bend my wire down like that. So I get, if, as you see, I get just a little bend in it. And that makes everything lay perfectly in line when I put my blades and stuff on it. I'm gonna go through my blade combinations and stuff here in a minute. This is a 3 8 ounce, and that's what I do to, to maximize the performance of my spinnerbait, where I can catch more fish on it without wasting the spinnerbait. I mean, these things, they're not very expensive, but you're gonna, you get more uses out of it. So that's one tip I'll give you. You can do that with any spinnerbait on the market. The only thing is if you go up in wire size, like if you go to 35 thousandths or 40 thousandths, the thicker this wire is, the bigger this split ring's got to be. You may, you may have to use a number two, but uh, that's one of the, that's a, tr a trick that I'll show you that Gerald Swindle passed on to me and I'm passing it on to you. So now we'll go through the blade combinations. Uh, you know, early in the spring, early in the spring, I don't throw a spinner bait very much in the winter time. But once we get out of the winter time, like closer to spring, like here on the Tennessee River, I'm going to say around, you know, the, the month of March, the end of February, the beginning of March, I'm going to take a 5 8 ounce spinner bait, a 5 8 ounce head, and I'm going to throw, <clears throat> I'm going to put on a single, a single number 5 or a single number 6 uh, Colorado or uh, Oklahoma blade. Uh, the, the difference is Oklahoma blade, as you can see, an Oklahoma blade is a, is a cross between, as you can see, it's, it's not as elongated as this is a willow blade. 
this is Oklahoma blade. See the difference? It's this is almost the same as a this is an Indiana. It's almost the same as the Indiana, but it's got it's got a bend in the middle of it, and it produces more vibration than an Indiana blade. Uh, and what I'm going to do is I'm, the reason I'm throwing a single blade is is I'm wanting to keep it down in the water column. And I'm wanting to creep it. It's almost like fishing a jig on rocks. You're going to target rocks mostly, some some laydowns and stuff like that. And I'm going to target uh, channel swings. Uh, or the last channel swing going into a flat, depending on if it's later in March, the, depending on the time of year, you know, if it's the, the, the end of February, the beginning of March, I'm going to stay out more toward the mouth of the creeks, even some main channel stuff, and I'm going to, you want to... It's Mike Iaconelli, this is Bash U TV. Here's what's awesome about Bash U TV. You get the top instructors. Real tools that help you catch more fish consistently. And that's why you want to check out Bash U TV. Join the Bass U family. Welcome to Bass U TV.